Hello and welcome to Aqua Lifestyle. In part two of our multi-part series on the Lorentz Elite FS, we're going to talk about the basic setup of your fish finder functions, sonar functions on the Elite FS and how best to set them up for fresh water. So stay tuned. Hello and welcome. In our previous video we covered the basic setup of the Elite FS and went through the setup menus and the system settings. Today we're going to cover sonar and uh, fish finder functions such as side scan, down scan, live sight if you are adding it, and active target if you're adding it. Uh, but first let's cover the basic uh, sonar settings. So we're going to go into our system settings menu at the top cog button in the upper left hand corner or we can hit our power button and go to settings in our system settings menu. We're going to select sonar and first it's going to ask you internal or network sonar. You're going to set those up depending on where the sounder information is coming from. If you're running a multiple screen system it's going to be a uh, network sonar. Uh, if you're just running it by itself, it's an internal sonar. So there are other functions down here, including installation. And you'll see the different options on the menu as you scroll through here. Live site and active target down at the bottom if you're adding those features. So let's get started with the installation. The sonar installation, it's gonna, the menu is going to pop up and it's going to ask you the source. You can name what the source is, so you can go in and type a, a specific name if it's a bow display or a helm display. Um, you can adjust your depth offset, your water speed calibration if you need to make adjustments on that, water speed averaging, temperature, and transducer type. Now this is very important. You're going to need to select what transducer is driving this display. And if you're not sure what it is, you can look about six inches down from where it plugs into the unit. The plug of the transducer should have a little ID label that will identify which one it is. So select the correct one, press enter, and you should be good to go. Now it's very important to select the right transducer. So back on our home screen here, we've got uh, sonar, we've got side scan, down scan, it's showing 3D, live sight, and active view, but those won't actually show on your menu unless they're pre-selected in the system setup to display. Because we're going to be talking about setting those up, I've got them on here, otherwise they're not going to show on your display. So let's hit sonar and start with that. We're going to go to our menu on the side here and go through the functions on the menu. Now tapping general, this brings up something that will do some presets in your machine to best set it up for the different types of fishing. You've got shallow, fresh, deep, slow troll, fast troll, clear water, those kind of settings. Now general, it's a, that's an all around, sometimes that will work just fine for you. Freshwater fishing, you've got shallow and fresh, you can do fresh deep. Slow troll, fast troll, clear water, and something I don't get to do too much here in Florida, ice fishing. Now you're going to want to select whichever one best suits the type of fishing that you're doing at the time. Um, I generally don't set mine to fresh while I'm uh, bass fishing or freshwater fishing. I would recommend uh, probably shallow. Lawrence says shallow is anything 60 feet or less. I found that it works very well for anything under 100 feet. Uh, it seems to optimize the machine for that, so you may want to consider that setting when bass fishing. Next on the menu is range. Now, a lot of people leave this in auto, and that works perfectly well. I tend to like to select a depth range that I know I'm going to be fishing in because I don't like the way it judders and shifts uh, scale. If you're moving around in depth uh, quite a bit, you know, if things are changing, it, it makes it more difficult to see the screen, I think, if it's constantly shifting and changing range. So I'll set a depth range that I know is going to keep my bottom line, the bottom image, somewhere down in the bottom third of the screen. Um, in this particular case, you know, where if I set it to 30 feet, you see it seems to be tracking pretty well and not jumping around and changing scales. The next option is frequency, and this particular one has uh, 
regular frequencies as well as chirp. Freshwater, you're going to want to choose high chirp if that option is available. If not, you want the highest frequency available to give you the best results in shallow water. Sensitivity, you have a slider scale. I would leave it in auto mode most of the time. If you're fishing dirty water, you may need to make some slight adjustments, but usually only very slight and generally auto is going to be just fine for you. Clear line is your next option and that's really a matter of personal preference. Again, it's a slider so you can adjust the slider and change the colorization of your bottom line and your sonar. Next option is advanced and once we tap that, that's going to take us into some other features. We've got noise rejection and that's going to help you if you're getting electrical noise or vertical lines in your sonar. Remember that the higher you turn those uh, filters on like noise, the less sensitive the machine is. So you want to keep it at the lowest setting possible or off completely. The next is surface noise and that's going to be uh, any noise or clutter that you get up at the top of the screen. Same with those settings. Next is scroll speed and tapping that you can bring up a slider that help you adjust the scroll speed and that's how fast the image moves across your screen. You can slow it down or speed it up. If you speed it up you notice the arches start stretching out. Well that's because whatever that uh, is causing that reading is in your beam for longer so it could be a fish something like that. Generally you're not going to want to mess with that you'll just leave it in auto mode. Next is ping speed and you're going to want to leave that in max also. You got another slider there. That's the speed at which the signal is going down to the bottom, bouncing off the bottom, coming back up. To get the best resolution, you're going to want to keep it at maximum speed. Down at the bottom, you got manual mode if you want to set everything manually and do it uh, fully manual. So next we'll hit the back button, and down at the bottom, you'll see it says more options. You're going to press that. The stop sonar allows you to pause the sonar and stop the signal from being sent on the transducer. This is handy if you're switching from one unit to another, if one unit might be interrupting another unit, uh, interfering the frequencies, you can do that, press it again, and it just starts back up again. Next on the menu is the splits option. You can have no split, zoom, bottom lock, or flasher. The zoom just shows you a zoomed image of the bottom. On the left side, the bottom lock will lock into the bottom and make sure that's showing on your left side there. Then the last option is flasher, and that just shows you your flasher screen on the left side. Next option is going, if you hit the back button, is going to be your palette. You can change your palette colors, pick whichever you like. Uh, fresh water, some tend to show up a little better than others, and it's basically a matter of just picking the one that's going to work best for you. Next is downscan overlay. You click that and it'll overlay the downscan onto your chirp screen. A lot of people don't use this. They'll do a split screen with separate displays uh, in each portion of the screen. All right, now if we hit temperature graph, you're going to get a temperature line. It's very hard to see in this display, but uh, in this demo mode. But there's a little red line up at the top and you get a temperature scale in the upper right hand corner on your scales. And it'll show uh, peaks and troughs so you can find thermals easily that way. Um, next is going to be your depth. And what that does is it draws a black line right on where your depth readings are. So the 19.8 is actually showing us that black line right on the far left of the screen. And you can turn that on and off just by touching the button. At the bottom is a scope. You hit that and you see there you get a flasher, uh, just like the round flasher in the previous screen, only this is in a vertical format. I find this handy in salt water when I'm looking for structure or looking for fish in the column. It's going to show you real time. Look, there's the red right there. That's showing the fish uh, as it comes across the screen there, but it's showing it in real time as it enters the beam. Handy feature to have when you're looking for fish or structure and you're underway. If you hit the back button, and more options, a scope. Again, now you see the arrow down there, that means there's more stuff down below. And if we take a look, we've got a preview button. You can turn it off, you can have it at cursor only, so you can click, put the cursor somewhere, and preview will show up on the top of the display there. If you click always, you'll see it up at the top of the screen, it'll continuously give you that preview. 
Now the last option on the menu for this uh, broadband screen is fish symbols. You can have them turned off, you can turn symbols on, you'll see little fish emblems will pop up. You can put depth, so you have the arcs with the depth next to it, or you can click both and you have the fish and the depth uh, showing when it marks the fish in the sounder. Most people will leave that off once they get to know the machine because you're going to get better representation from the arcs than you would from fish symbols. Uh, but if you want that, you can turn it on and off very easily, and that's the end of the menu. That's all your functions on the broadband. So let's take a look at the next option, which is going to be side scan. Now keep in mind a lot of the menu options in side scan and down scan are going to be very similar to your broadband, so we'll cover those pretty quickly. So you got your side scan screen there, and you have your data windows uh, showing the data. And we explained is setting up data in the first video on the general setup, so you might want to check that out. That's going to allow you to set up data fields with stuff that you want for each specific screen. Now you notice that we're now in full screen and the menu hit away automatically. I'm going to show you how to do that. You go into settings, you go scroll down to advanced features, and you're going to go to user interface, and right in the middle there, auto hide menu. You want to turn that on. What that's going to do is it'll hide the menu away after 15 seconds. We'll turn it off right now because we don't want to keep switching back, but that allows the menu to pop out of the way and you have a full screen for your sonar, which is a very handy thing. You're going to want to do that. So make that setting and that'll help you see the full screen when you're not playing with the menu. Next options are range, and you can adjust your range or set it to auto. You're going to want to, if you're scouting, set it out a little further. Next is frequency, same thing with that. A lower frequency if you're scouting out further range, higher frequency if you're in close uh, once you've found what you're looking for. Next, you click advanced, and you got a couple more options. Surface clarity, again, you want to keep that as low as possible. Um, and if you go back, you've got flip, and that's if you have the transducer mounted backwards, you can flip left and right so that it's reading properly. If you hit back, and then more options, you have the option to stop sonar, just like you did in broadband, and you can switch your view. You can have just uh, left and right, just left, or just right. And this is handy if you're setting up uh, multiple screens on the same screen. You might want to have one set up with just the left side and another set up with just the right side with other sonar information. And then lastly you have range lines which you can turn on or off. I don't like them. They tend to clutter the screen in my opinion and I use a scale down at the bottom but to each their own. And that's it for the side scan functions. Now let's go on to down scan. So we click the downscan icon and you can see that they combine their downscan with what they call fish reveal, showing the fish from the chirp screen and combining it with your down screen. Best of both worlds. So our first option is going to be range. And again, it's just like the others, auto range, or you can set it to the depth that's going to stop it from jumping around and changing scale. Frequency, same thing, high and low frequency, just like we discussed on the others. Contrast control with a slider. Usually in auto it's fine, but you can make minor adjustments with the slider. To get out of that, just hit the back button and the menu will pop back up again. Next is palette. Same thing. You can change your palette coloration to whatever suits you and you prefer. Depending on your taste and your vision, some screens are going to be much better than others. So it's definitely worth playing around with this and seeing what you like best. So hitting the back button and the next option, which is advanced, that'll give you surface clarity that we explained previously, is the same thing. Hitting the back button will take you back to, and back again, will take you back to your main menu. Then your next option is fish reveal options, and you have a little submenu there with sliders, and you can make your adjustments for your fish reveal including turning the fish reveal on and off. Something you're probably not going to want to do because it is a neat feature to have on the display. Hitting the back button here, if we hit the back button. The last option in the sub menu is palettes again and you can change your colors on the palettes just like before. Down at the bottom is more options and you can stop sonar just like previously. And then your next option is fish reveal. This little submenu gives the option of range lines that you can turn on and off and preview just like we discussed in previous sonar screens. 
and that's it for downscan. 3D, we don't have anything hooked up to this. The menus would operate the same way if you had a 3D module plugged into this. Don't have one to display, and that's going to be a video for another time. With Life Sight and Active Target options that you want to hook to the Elite FS, we'll go through briefly those, but we'll have separate videos in detail of those coming up here soon. Now, I don't have uh, Live Sight plugged directly into the machine. I have a simulation file here uh, that shows uh, what kind of display you would have when you hook a unit up to uh, this display shows your beam uh, according to your boat in the upper right hand corner you've got a picture and this one actually identifies that you got a fish on again it's a demo file that I've loaded into the machine so uh, you wouldn't have that obviously on your screen but uh, you would have the live imaging hitting the menu uh, you got your basic menu functions um, you've got your range sensitivity and noise rejection and they're all going to work the same way that uh, the previous menus did you, again, you're going to want to keep your uh, filters set as low as possible because they are going to affect the sensitivity, especially in these live view and, and active view screens. If you click more options down at the bottom, another menu will pop up. You have the option to stop sonar, just like previous uh, displays. Target trails, you can flip the view, again, if your transducer is mounted in reverse. You've got palette options and range grids, just like we talked about previously. And the last option down at the bottom is record video. And you press that if you want to record an actual um, screen grab of something interesting. So that's a very basic overview of LifeSight. Now let's take a look at Active Target. The first option on the menu is auto mode. You can do auto down or forward depending on how your transducer is mounted and how it's set. Next is your depth range and again you can set it to whatever range you want. You can have it in an auto mode. If you don't want it jumping around you can set an adequate depth setting just like we spoke about in previous sounder modes. Next is sensitivity and you can adjust it with a slider again. Usually auto mode is good. You might need to make some minor adjustments depending on water conditions. Next is noise rejection. Same as we had discussed in other sonar modes. Hitting more options at the bottom brings up another menu with your stop sonar just like others. Target trails, flipping your view, palettes, and range grids. Down at the bottom is record video. Again, you can record something if you find it interesting and it'll save it to a file on the machine. And this is a view of it in a forward or scout mode. Excellent if you're looking for structure or for fish. Uh, this mode is excellent for that, especially in fresh water. Lastly, you're gonna to wanna to set up some custom screens and have them in your favorites here on the right side of the screen. You can do that just by pressing the little plus at the bottom and a screen will pop up and then you just drag in the displays that you want. So you press it and drag it in for a single display and up here it'll tell you what your different display options are for that combination. So let's drag some more in here, second, a third, and let's pick a fourth. We'll drag that in and then if I click up here it's going to show me all the different layouts that I can have to display those four different screens. So I'll pick the one I want. I like that one and it'll give me those. Now if I hit the X, I'm going to discard that one, but uh, let's pick one out here and set it up. Let's see, what are we going to do? We'll select that one, we'll select this one, and that one, and let's see one more here. Drag it in. I'll pick the windows that I want, the display that I want. There it is down at the bottom. I like that one. So I'm going to move it around a little bit and adjust it. I like it. So I'm going to hit save and there it is. Now I can customize the data fields within each of these individually and you can refer um, on this sub menu. Um, you can refer to our first video to do that. But clicking the button that I just did there, you can adjust your window sizes there, the pane sizes uh, with these sliders and customize it each one to the size that you want and taking up as much screen as you want. You save that and there you go. And then like I said you can do custom data in each of those windows. Now if I go back to my favorites you'll see it sitting right there. I click on it and there it is and my menu for each of those pops up on the side. 
Very simple, very easy. And again, refer to our first video. I've gone into this in depth on the first video. If you click the edit, you'll see two little buttons will come up. You'll have an X if you want to remove it, and you'll have a little wrench. If you click the wrench, you can make adjustments to that particular screen. Very handy to do, very easy, very simple. And you're going to want to set up each of those windows depending on which unit you have. If you have one up at the trolling motor, obviously the windows, your favorites, are going to be set up differently from a unit that you have at the helm, for example, on a bass rig. So uh, you're going to want to think about that and set up the displays to maximize visibility and the ease of access depending on where they are. Well, that's it for the basic setup of freshwater sonar uh, features and functions in this machine. We'll have another video uh, very similar to this with saltwater setup, some minor differences in that, setting it up for water, saltwater as opposed to freshwater. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, remember to look at the others in the series to get a full understanding of the machine. And if you have questions or comments, post them down below. If you like the video, please remember to subscribe and like and hit that notification bell so you'll know when other videos are up and ready to view. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you back here soon.